Everybody say after me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wow. <laughs> that is Jamaica's new... Wait, go again. Area code. Area code. Yes. Wow, what a wonderful sense of joy and pride to celebrate our athletes, our female athletes, in winning gold, silver, bronze. What do you call it? A clean sweep. And as I talk about the Olympics, it's my joy to welcome Olympian Aileen Bailey and her precious mom. Welcome, both of you. <clears throat> Woo -hoo! Awesome. Wow, you know, God is in this place. And so let us just affirm. I think I can take this out. Let us just affirm together. Just, just hold this idea. God is in this place. God expresses in and through and as my heart now. Just hold that idea for a few seconds. And let us know together that that one that we declare, that one that we know as God, that is the one that urged us here this morning that is expressing as all life, as all power, as all joy, is expressing as 
the power and the awesomeness of our athletes in Tokyo. It is the power and the resilience of the Jamaican people. It is that which we know as perfection and wholeness within the center and circumference of our very being. And so we declare on this that we call Emancipation Day. We know a sense of joy and freedom from any sense of lack, limitation, any mind-created boundaries. We know these boundaries fall and dissolve into nothingness. As we rise triumphant to declare our perfection and wholeness, to allow our gifts and our crafts to just express perfectly and powerfully. And so I know too that for this Sunday morning service, that this experience is one in which we allow our consciousness to expand, to embrace a greater possibility of who we are as sons and daughters and full expressions of the one. And so I give thanks for the message and the music, for the joy and the laughter, for the inspiration and for everything that takes place this morning. And with a sense of deep gratitude for the blessing that we are and for the experience that we are having just now, I release my word and just know. I know with all my heart that it is fulfilled. It is our divine experience and I declare that it is so now. And so it is. Wow, I welcome you all again and a special, special welcome to all of you who are joining us on the World Wide Web. Wow, I mean, it's awesome that we have expanded our reach. So we are not just in the temple. We are all over the world. Isn't that awesome? Wow. And so I, I'm going to share a special inspirational um, reading with you this morning. You know, every little girl watching those three athletes yesterday must say within themselves, I wonder, could it be me, Lord? Absolutely. And so this morning I'm going to share um, a reading from the Science of Mind magazine. There is a, an epigraph, there are two actually, one by Thomas Edison, and it says, when you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this, you haven't. And Ernest Holmes says, a steadfast determination to attain some purpose, the letting go of all that opposes it, a complete reliance upon the law of good and an unqualified trust in spirit. This is the real prayer. Wow. And writing in, in on, this is for this um, Tuesday, July 27th, Reverend Julie Morley says, we live in a world built on possibilities. Quantum physics tells us that the only thing limiting our experience is our own belief and thinking that anything is impossible. Possibility thinking, however, is a special skill. <clears throat> Most education systems teach us to think in terms of predictable outcomes. We learn to calculate probabilities based on past experiences. We aren't graded on thinking about all the possible ways to solve a problem. It takes a leap of faith to think in terms of possibilities. Leadership training programs and motivational seminars tell us regularly to think outside of the box or look for new ways to do things. To achieve this, we must unlearn all the ways we've thought about how we operate in the world and learn a new skill. By exploring possibilities, we allow the divine spirit to express through us and inspire us to think of solutions that no one has ever conceived. We must not give up too soon, for there are an infinite number of options. The source within has an answer for everything. And there is an affirmation, which I'd like to invite you to share with me, and I'll speak it once. I allow the endless possibilities of spirit to flow through me and into my experience together. I allow the endless possibilities of spirit 
to flow through me and into my experience. And so it is. Now we are going to join our voices in song and sing the praise song together on page two, Kumbaya. center and it's on the flyer in your program together the temple, the temple of, Light of life center, center for spiritual living is a, is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community, community from, from which the christ peace love and, and joy emanate to touch to heal to bless to prosper and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way the light, the light of the Christ, Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth, guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment and attainment we are blessed and to god be the honor and the glory forever and so it is thank you friends please be seated i know it is my pleasure to light the candle on behalf of all the youth of the world I light this candle on behalf of all the youth of the world. Let us together behold the Christ in them. And so it is. And now 
Let us together, you can remain seated, sing our Temple Mission song. The Temple of Light, the Temple of Light. I'm reminded of our wonderful maestro. Wow, awesome penmanship. Can I use penmanship to describe the song? Well penned. <laughs> okay. Mission, mission ship, okay. Okay, and now we have a few short announcements. Our floral arrangements were for last Wednesday's Thanksgiving uh, for the wonderful life of Miss Audrey Cooper and were lovingly arranged by yours truly. <laughs> Do we have anyone visiting with us for the first time this morning? Any first time guests? Um, Aileen's mommy? Yes, you have been here? Yes. Oh, we welcome you. We welcome you to our hearts. Are you going to Yes, yes. Um, our usher, Janet, is going to put a, a sticker on your on your shoulder, and it says that we behold the Christ in you. We invite you to sign our visitor's book, which is on the table um, at our entrance, and we invite you to come again and again and again. We would love to have you. So we are still live streaming. And that happens every Sunday at 9 a.m. And also we live stream our, our Tuesday evening healing services at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday. And the recordings are av available later on on YouTube. And the schedule of our temple activities is also posted online on the Temple of Light Facebook page. Now, join Reverends Sonia Davidson and Anne Shand on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. for a class on Zoom based on the book by Emmett Fox, The Mental Equivalent. This is how you will learn what the, the thinking process needs to be in order to create the good that you desire. After you register online on our Facebook page, you will receive the Zoom link. So, we look forward to having you in, this, in those classes. This is the new way moving forward. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff online, which creates a, you know, certainly more freedom and flexibility for you, our membership. Now this morning, we have our wisdom circle, and we invite you to join Mrs. Angela Elliott for this experience, the wisdom circle, from 10.30 a.m to 11.30, and this is on the Lignum Vitae Terrace outside the book room. This spiritual activity involves reading and discussing various spiritual books. Everyone is, everyone is invited to continue exploring Ernest Holmes's book, New Design for Living, but you need not have a copy of the book as someone reads for the group. Now, quiet moments in the garden continue. Reverend John is going to be on leave, but he asks, he has asked us to announce that although he will be on vacation, he will be still hosting quiet moments in the garden on Monday mornings at 6 a.m. 
from wherever on the planet he may be. Isn't that something? Make we clap him. We truly appreciate your love and dedication, Reverend John. And of course, all of us, we send you on your way with plenty of love and John. We hope that you get enough, enough rest and come back energized and 40 years, you know, off, you know, you know, the fountain of youth type of experience and looking forward to having you back in September. Mm -hmm. Now, I, it is my pleasure to bring a very brief uh, update from the Thriving Ministry Council. And I just have two main things that I want to share. The first, our 2030 strategy outline was presented to you, our members and friends, on July 18th at an extraordinary general meeting. I'm happy to report that everyone present at that, at that um, event, both in the sanctuary and online, was blown away by the audacious vision of the future that has been created for the temple. Anybody here was at that event? Who was it? Put your hands up. You recall the experience that it was and how awesome our plans for the future are? Okay. Well, after a robust question and answer session, following the presentation, two resolutions were passed. The first to accept the strategy outline and the second for the approval of the writing of the strategic plan itself. Included in that plan would be the implementation strategy. Uh, project leader Lorna Phillips will be craft crafting this document. Of course, there will be multiple projects and activities that will be generated by our strategic plan. Low-hanging fruit, of course, will be implemented in short order, while medium and long-term activities will be tackled in due course. Now, one of the low-hanging fruits that we are going to harvest right away is the second thing I want to share this morning. And that is about our 12-week prosperity adventure that is now open for registration. This uh, awesome 12-week experience was born out of the Consciousness Raising Quadrant, but it's a Temple of Light effort. The program will bring together both the spiritual principles supporting a consciousness of abundance with hard financial savvy and know-how. Financial experts have been invited to share their knowledge and financial tools, along with a special guest from Centers for Spiritual Living for the opening session. The program begins on Wednesday, September 15th. Put that um, date in your calendars, your whether electronic or as like myself, I still write them in a book. Uh, from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. The cost is US 295, or if you're paying in Jamaican, we're not going to convert. The cost in Jamaican is $44,250. Now, if you're paying full by August 31st, you will enjoy the early bird rate of US 250, or 37,500 Jamaican. And, Here's what's special. You'll be entered in a special draw where one lucky person will get his or her money back. Can you imagine? So pay in advance, and you might just be the lucky winner of um, the refund of your tuition fee. Now, I believe with all my heart that this prosperity, this 12-week prosperity adventure will put you squarely on the path of financial freedom. It is designed to raise your consciousness around wealth, money, abundance, and it will also introduce you to the spiritual principles, beliefs, and practical techniques that are the foundation of prosperity. Over the 12 weeks of this program, you will learn the spiritual laws that govern prosperity as health, wealth, and relationships. You will be guided to set life-transforming goals and take actions that support you in achieving them. You will learn how to see and treat money as spiritual energy, so it will work for you. You don't have to work for it. And you'll also gain strategies to release any blocks you may have around money and wealth. You will also receive rules, tools, and tips 
that will help to shift your consciousness around debt and clear the path to your fullest experience of prosperity. Now, this program will be a virtual online experience conducted via Zoom. So it will be open to everyone anywhere in the world that you are. Our registration details will be posted online shortly. And in fact, I do believe the flyer is already on Facebook. Okay? But we are going to, we're setting up a landing page so that you can register effortlessly and pay um, your fee online. But if you don't want to wait for that, you can write your check right now. Call, come into the office during the week and you can um, register. So we, win, we do invite you to take full advantage of this program. It's a not to be missed opportunity, which is guaranteed to be life changing. Okay? So I look forward to seeing everyone here. And you tell your friend, when you get the email, send it out to all your friends. We can accommodate, I mean, uh, limitless numbers of persons. Now, the last thing I want to share, the community quadrant under the leadership of Ms. Doreen Mallet is reorganizing and growing and is inviting you to jump on board. The community quadrant focuses on the social dynamics of our center and includes the building of our online presence, youth engagement, social activities, and outreach. You can contact Doreen directly. She's asked me to include her number, and you can collect it from me afterwards if you so wish. It's 876, or I should say 123, eh? 876-997-7000. <laughs> That's 876 997 -9161 on WhatsApp as, as well, or by email, and that's, it's an easy one, dmallet2009 at gmail.com. The next event planned by this quadrant is a series of short training courses in computer technology, addressing the everyday issues that confront many of our users. More on this later. You know, friends, we are all very dedicated and delighted to serve and we urge you to make the powerful choice to bring your hearts and your hands in service to the temple. You know, guys, it is, it is so easy to point out what is not working in a community. But it is far more powerful to do what it takes to set it right. You agree? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our exciting plans and projects cannot implement themselves. They will require the investment of time, talent, and treasure to bring them to life. And I know, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong and faithful optimist that you will step up and help to make this happen. So the TMC thanks each and every one of you for your support. And we look forward to having you join us on our onward journey of transformation. Namaste. And so, um, for the, this completes our announcements. Oh, there are two more things. Oh, for donations, for tithes, and for offerings, if you do feel moved to support our ministry, if you, if you feel to dig deeply and share your treasure, kindly visit our donate page at donate dot temple of light csl dot org that's donate dot temple of light csl dot org and that has all of our banking details we thank you for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light to the world we also continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time a practitioner will be available to pray with you immediately following our service every Sunday. And on duty this morning, from wherever in the world he is, is practitioner Steve Golding. And the number to call, 876-289-0907. That's 876-289-0907. 
You can also speak with a minister from Monday to Friday between 8 a.m. to 12 midnight by calling that same number, 876-289-0907. Friends, it is a sad time for board member and temple friend and family, Dennis Chong. As he and his family are now marking the sudden passing of their son, let us surround them with our love and uphold them with our prayers. Mm -hmm. So this concludes our announcements. So please join us in the singing of our first hymn this morning. Lift every voice found on page three of your program and on the screen for those of you joining us online. God, 
true to our native land, true to the beauty of our nature, our Ponciana, our Lignum Vitae, our Achaean salt fish, our bandana, our black, green, and gold, and all our Olympians, and all that represents Jamaica at this time. We remain true to our native land. And this morning, we have one of the blooms of our native land. She is a foundation, a pillar of this community. And she will bring her message of love and inspiration this morning. Friends, please help me bring um, to the podium Minister Reverend Anne Shan. Thank you, Sandy, for that warm welcome. And let me add my own words of welcome. Welcome to those joining us from the World Wide Web, and very specially this morning, our face-to-face -face members who always are with us. This is indeed a day to celebrate, a day of thanksgiving, Emancipation Day 182 years ago. This declaration was read. Freedom Paper. August morning, 1838, by the Queen, a proclamation. Whereas an act has been passed by the legislator of this or island of Jamaica for terminating the present system of apprenticeship on the first day of August next, and thereby granting the blessing and privileges of unrestricted freedom to all classes of its inhabitants and whereas it is incumbent on all the inhabitants of this our island to testify their grateful sense of this divine favor. We do therefore by and with the advice of our privy council of this said island, direct and appoint that, all, that Wednesday, the said first day of August next, be observed in all churches and chapels as a day of general thanksgiving. To mighty God, for these his mercies and of humble intercession for the continued blessing and protection on this most important occasion. And we do hereby call upon persons of all classes within this or said island to observe this said day of August next with the same reverence and respect which is observed and due to the Sabbath. Witness His Excellency Sir Lionel Smith and a slew of night commanders and the rest of it. The same reverence and respect which is observed due to the Sabbath. Friends, we have come a long way. Yes, as Sandra said, one, two, three. The factory, as BBC calls us, <laughs> is still very much alive. And we have the potential to produce athletes of distinction. Thanks, Aileen. I can't do what you do, but I can cheer you and all those that have that potential within. Yes, friends, the period of apprenticeship was terminated for all slaves and they became free. The blessing and privileges of unrestricted freedom to all. It was incumbent on all inhabitants of this island to testify their grateful sense of this divine favor. In the document, the declaration was made that the said first day, August next, be observed in all churches and chapels as a day of general thanksgiving to Almighty God. For these his mercies and of his Humble inter of, and of humble intercession for his continued blessing and protection on this most important occasion. And we do hereby call upon all persons of all classes within our said island to observe this said day of August next with the same reverence and respect which is observed and due to the Sabbath. Points of significance from the proclamation. 
blessings and privileges of unrestricted freedom to all. Inhabitants to testify their grateful sense of this divine favor and a day deemed for general thanksgiving to be observed. My thoughts this morning are on the theme spiritual freedom and its inherent response that flows into our daily living. Spiritual freedom. Yes, we thank our colonial masters for their awakening to the realization that freedom is a blessing and privilege from the divine that encompasses all of creation. Divine favor, another term for grace, is due to all and everyone. We are grateful for this truth and that, has, that it has indeed found a way in the consciousness of our colonial masters and thereby allowing this proclamation from as far back as 1838. But this truth must emerge because it is the birthright of every living soul. So I do agree with the proclamation that this day should be given the respect and reverence as the usual Sabbath, a day of thanksgiving for the realization of our freedom. Jack Holland in his book, Your Freedom to Be, stated, and I quote, we are spiritual beings first, last, and always. And our freedom rests not in external manifestations, but in an inner awareness of what we are and of what we are a part of." End of quote. So on this Emancipation Day, we give thanks that our freedom does not lie or rest in external manifestations or proclamations, but in that inner awareness of what we are and what we are a part of. From that understanding, we can choose where we place our faith and attention. And on this day, as we celebrate freedom, it must manifest in the collective consciousness of all. So freedom exists everywhere on this sacred planet. But what of our belief systems? Do they announce that we are free? Do we practice limitless living in our thinking and actions? Does the external manifestations give rise to our freedom to express ourselves? Friends, the outer cannot determine the truth of our freedom. Holland goes on to say, and I quote, we are unique expressions of the omnipresence and our attention must be on this truth. Truth is to be found in what eternally is, and that is God. Our Judeo-Christian Bible in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 17 to 18 reminds us, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, end of quote. The presence of God is within each individual and therefore liberty is present. Inherently, we are created in the image and likeness of freedom, liberty. As we continue to behold that promise in our hearts, in our conscious awareness, that glory of God within continues to transform us into that which we were created to be, free spiritual beings. That perennial urge to express without limitation is so much a part of each one and every one of us. Howard Thurman, the American poet and co-pastor of the American nation's first interracial congregation stated, and I quote, the discovery made by the slave that finds its expression in song, a complete and final refusal to be stopped. The spirit broods over all the stubborn and recalcitrant aspects of experience 
until they begin slowly but inevitably to take the shape of one's deep desiring. There is a bottomless resourcefulness in man that ultimately enables him to transform the spear of frustration in a shaft of light, end of quote. The spear of frustration in a shaft of light. We all have come to understand bondage, and it is not the truth about us. There is that which is in us that will overcome the stubborn vicissitudes of life, this bottomless resourcefulness that allows us to transform the spears of frustration in our lives into shafts of light that lifts us out of any and every untenable situation or event. Dr. Holmes has a statement that correlates that idea that no matter what the circumstances are, the intrinsic and fundamental truth is we were created out of freedom. Even sometimes when that idea seems alien to our belief system at some time or the other, we were created free. He states, in principle and in potential, we are immersed in good, for we are in the mind of God. But we have freedom or volition to create in our own experience out of the possibilities of life which we have been endowed, the prerogative of heaven or hell. So we need to shake ourselves loose from the tyranny of fear, superstition, isolation, and emotional traditions, end of quote. So whatever reasons we use to remain in bondage, we have the choice to create our own heaven and hell until we have gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then the time is ripe for the shift to express that which is our true natural reality. For the past four weeks in the class Mental Equivalence, we have been discussing and dissecting the significance of that phrase. The class relies on the information gained from the book, The Mental Equivalent by Emmett Fox. He states in the book, and I quote, there is a mental equivalent of every object or occurrence on the physical plane. Everything that you see or feel on the material plane, whether it is your body, your home, your business, or your city, is but the concrete expression of a mental equivalent that you hold, end of quote. Everything we see on the physical, there is a matching mental pattern of thought that corresponds to it. So, we do have the pattern of, pattern of spiritual freedom ingrained in us, whether or not we are consciously aware of it, and it will not be suppressed. At some stage of our growth and unfoldment, an avenue will be created to allow the flow of that which is perfect and complete within us to be expressed. I summarize a story, a case study, given by Dr. Ernest Holmes in his book, Help for Today. In his own words, I quote, a noted surgeon's wife phoned me and said, I have gone as far as I can. I am ready to get a divorce. I am convinced that to live with someone who is causing not only myself but the children to be nervous and ill is wrong. We had quite a battle this morning and I told my husband, if he did not see you at once and straighten himself out, I am going to sue for divorce, end of quote. The reason for this, she told Dr. Holmes, was that his every word was filled with criticism condemnation, and sarcasm. Even the children feared him. He had driven away all of her friends with his rudeness, and she doubted her love for him. The husband, the doctor, called Dr. Holmes. His opening statement was, as I am a doctor of medicine, I am sure you know that I understand the situation at home perfectly. My wife is very neurotic. 
She thinks I'm cruel and deliberately causing her to suffer, which is, of course, not true. However, this morning she said she would divorce me at once if I didn't talk to you about myself. This is unnecessary. I would appreciate it if you would call her and tell her we have talked. And in your opinion, she's exaggerating the whole problem. I feel you should tell her that she is the one that needs help. End of quote. Dr. Holmes disagreed, of course, and asked that he stop by his office. The doctor went to see Dr. Holmes. The summary of that visit was that the doctor felt his wife was wrong in her accusations. Her trouble is imaginary. He was always under constant pressure and therefore required peace and quiet at home. His response to the situation at his office, he noted that his wife did not understand that his employees were only interested in big money and short hours. In other words, the good doctor did not feel he was at fault in any way. His wife liked to complain. Mm. The doctor had a mental equivalent that he was not at fault. And the accusations were baseless. Anyway, Dr. Holmes, very wise man, gave him homework. He requested that the doctor buy a package of dried beans and take it to the office. He should explain to his staff that he had reports that his words were unkind, his manner negative and displeasing. And for the next few days, he wanted to experiment to prove that these accusations were false. Therefore, he would ask them that every time they heard him say something unkind or sarcastic, call it to his attention and place a dried bean in a bowl on his desk. The good doctor felt that the experiment was ridiculous, preposterous, and childish. Dr. Holmes responded that perhaps the experiment would prove him right. And what he has been saying about himself was true. If that was so, then he, Dr. Holmes, would gladly phone his wife. The doctor left the office <laughs> and with the promise that he would report his findings in two days. But by that very afternoon at about four o'clock, the doctor called Dr. Holmes and he said, and I quote, my bean pot is running over. He was laughing as he said, I can't even open my mouth without having a bean in the pot. <laughs> then he became serious. And he said, thank you for teaching me a great lesson. I was sincere when I told you that my words were always kind and tolerant. I thought they were until this afternoon. But the beans speak for themselves. I can promise you, my words and attitude will now be different. Incidentally, will you call my wife again and tell her to have bean pots ready for the family? We are going to have some fun tonight. End of quote. What have we understood from that case study? He was sincere in his belief that he was wrong. But he was wrong, sorry. He was also very open and once he realized the error thinking, he made the shift. A mental equivalent of his true self. His spiritual freedom would not be denied and he was able to come to a true understanding of self. What about us? Why not for the next rest of the week, every time, something positive, a blessing, a compliment, something good, is spoken, place a pea in a bowl on your table, and then observe. So your homework this week is every time you say something good, something pleasing, something that is a blessing, drop a dried bean or pea, whatever you have at home or marbles, drop it in a bowl on your table, and then at the end of the week, you can make your assessment. Dr. Holmes, at the end of the case study, stated, and I quote, yes, all of us can experience greater good in our lives if we will examine and understand our every thought, word, and action, end of quote. 
So friends, if something is not in alignment with the truth of our being, look at what is showing up. Observe it. And then laugh if it is, if it is well, not in a little dissonance. I suggest we laugh and joyfully take the steps to change the mental equivalent to that which is the true demonstration of a conscious spiritual being expressing from a position of love. Even if someone comes in our presence and there is dissonance, move towards the position of wholeness and let that idea of spiritual freedom, which is already embodied within us, find the right and appropriate way to express for us or in another point of expression or whatever needs to be dissolved will be dissolved in case of fear or doubt or whatever need to emerge will emerge. Sometimes it's just a blessing and a benediction that we need to give to someone who has come into our presence. It is indeed God meeting God. And only spirit's highest idea for the good of all concerned would manifest. Dr. Holmes noted that Jesus knew all of us are divine creations and that each one of us is capable of becoming attuned to a divine power and wisdom that can meet every need. So friends, let us do the work and remember that we are always immersed from that standpoint of spiritual freedom, the freedom to change whatever does not agree with who we are. How do we do that? Our first linchpin is that of affirmative prayer. This spiritual practice assists us in the area of focus on truth, affirming our oneness with the divine mind and realizing our good by planting ideas and thoughts that can only contribute to the ways and means to reveal our desired good with ease. Our good already exists in the field of divine possibilities. Our prayer must firstly recognize the presence of God, the all good, and we unify ourselves with that presence because we are created in the image and likeness of that which is freely expressing through us. From this spiritual position of truth, we accept, affirm, and realize with thanksgiving the good in our experience, releasing it to the law of our being for complete demonstration. We always realize that good and more good is always ours to experience. We accept this privilege, this freedom to demonstrate with reverence and respect. Another linchpin is the practice of med meditation. Listen to Reverend Sonia on Tuesday for an understanding of this very important practice. This practice along with learning to sit in silence prepares and keeps our mind fertile fertile to facilitate effortless demonstrations. Dr. Holmes was very adamant about this. He said, why do we not find emancipation? Because we do not take the time to be still and know that I am God and there's none else. We should recognize no other power, believe in no other consequently see and think of no other power. We should know there is no possibility of any other power existing except that of absolute good, end of quote. When we continue to impress that seed idea in our conscious awareness, there's only good to express in our life and affairs. Day by day, we live in this transcendent attitude. We think, talk, and act always from the possibility of complete expansion, and only good and greater good can indeed unfold in our lives effortlessly. Can we say this together after one, two, three? Life is good. Good and more good is mine today. Life is good. Good and more good is mine today. The third linchpin is the practice of mindfulness. I hope we all listen to Dr. Merritt Jones on Lifetime on Thursday evening. What is mindfulness? Being in the moment, always staying present to our feelings, our thoughts, words, and actions. And that must keep us vigilant, friends. 
able to maintain our new mental stance, our conversations will now reflect our highest good. We are able to intuitively to correct any decisions that may pop up and have fun while growing in divine favor. Ever grateful for our blessings and privileges to immerse ourselves in our spiritual freedom. So, my summary for today is we are spiritual beings living and experiencing freedom at all times. We have the power to correct and restore our lives to that which we were created to enjoy, an abundant life of good and more good. Thirdly, the use of affirmative prayer, meditation, silence, mindfulness, to assist us in maintaining the mental equivalent of our highest good, spiritual freedom. My challenge to all of us this day of emancipation, in words we have all heard from, or if you have read A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson, you know these. And I quote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful Beyond measure, it is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Happy Emancipation Day. Wow, thank you so much, Reverend Anne. Of course, I learned the words of the Declaration of Independence for the first time, that proclamation of independence, of emancipation, I beg your pardon, the proclamation of emancipation. And at, at the time, it was a day of celebration, uh, and the, you know, as, as, as people were declared to be free. But we need to celebrate the fact that our freedom does not rely on any proclamation, does it? but to just the acknowledgement and the recognition that that is a divine gift that we have and we need to choose. And she gave us so many different ways in which we can do that and do it powerfully through affirmation, through spiritual mind healing treatment, through meditation, and of course, if I may add, to come to class, okay? <laughs> and so we are, we have the possibility of our own spiritual freedom. Let us claim it. Friends, we're going to have our birthday blessing in a little while. And so I'm going to, before we do our, our, our uh, musical item, I'm going to ask the birthday persons, persons who have birthdays in August, to please stand and Reverend Anne will do the blessing. Wow. <laughs> And all those in virtual, please stand up as well. We may not be able to see you, but please join in this consciousness. and one Tilly. Mm -hmm. Well, we just give thanks. We give thanks for that power and presence that created our divine beloveds who celebrate another year 
of their incarnation on this plane of existence. We know that each one made out of the image and likeness of that which is free, I know, free to experience that abundant life of good and more God. So we proclaim and declare for them this morning that as good now simply just overflows in their lives, pressed down, shaken over, and running over, they experience perfect health, prosperity, joy, and all the good they can possibly dream of. I know for them that this endless possibility is even now unfolding in their lives and affairs. They are open and receptive that each moment is a blessing to their expanded awareness of the power and the presence of God within them. So I know that as they celebrate this day, this day of freedom, I know that as they free that God presence within them, they walk in avenues of peace and indeed pleasantness. And their way is indeed a light unto themselves as it is a light to all who come into contact with them. The light of God surrounds them. The blessings of God unfold in through as each one. Indeed, they are a blessing to this spiritual community. And indeed, we are blessed. I truly give thanks that all this is so. And so it is. Okay, so the gift for the birthday people is Lasselves, who will give us song. Good morning, dear friends. Just to up before I share the song, they, we like us to remember the Cuban people who are at this point at a turning point. From this very platform, it was said that consciousness must express. The time has come for the Cuban people who are now expressing that turning point that must occur. So we pray for them, don't we? Let us pray for them as we go about our daily avocation. For him we adore 
Thank you, Lassels, as we continue to praise that presence that is within each one of us. We do give thanks for our liberation and for all those on this plane of existence. So in that voice of liberation and thanksgiving, can we stand and say the prayer of Jamaica, please? It's in a flyer in your program. The radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island, Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the truths of life which set free. The light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, health, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness, and our oneness under God are now established. And so it is. And our final hymn is Faith of Our Fathers, which is to be found on page three in our program, and it is also on the screen. take our love offering and those who are about to press the donate button and say with me lovingly I give joyfully I receive be thou fruitful increase and multiply bless prosper and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs so be it. thank you father and so it is and we know of our closing affirmative prayer where we just thank God for this consciousness that has brought us together, this consciousness of freedom that allows us to worship, to honor, to glorify that presence of God in us as us. 
and indeed that presence and power in all sentient beings. I know it's that consciousness of love now simply just lifts from our hearts, magnified, going out to bless indeed the entire island and the cosmos. And it's that blessing of love we bestow on the Chung family, the Kidu family, just recognizing always that God is at the center of their experience and the experience of love which comforts and indeed provides them with everything that is necessary for them to experience that unity with the presence of love. So we give thanks for today and we give thanks that we are free, free indeed, as I release my word to that law and know for each one of us an expression of freedom overflowing, pressed down and shaken down in our lives and affairs as the good and more good. This is the truth and I know that it is so and, and so, so it is. is. And instead of our peace song, can we start the celebration this week of our by singing together lustily our national anthem. joining us in this wonderful consciousness. Ah, justice, knowledge, and wisdom for each one of us. Please join Reverend Sony on Tuesday evening and next Sunday, our beloved Vance, for leading the service on, as we celebrate Independence Day. So, as you plan your pots of beans, remember something good something that blesses each and everyone. Remember this week. Thank God for freedom. And so it is.